In today's video, we are going to talk all about monitor resolutions and what resolution you should pick for your desktop monitor. I'm w 2 best I make in-depth gear reviews and tutorials, and if you like this video after watching it, I would be super happy if you want to put a like on the video and maybe also subscribe to this channel. That gives me a ton of motivation to bring out new content moving forward. If you have any questions about what monitor to choose for yourself, please ask them down in the comment section below where I'm usually very active. What is resolution and what does it actually mean to have a higher resolution in different use cases? Let's cover the basics first. The resolution will be the number of pixels that you have in your screen. You will have one number of pixels in the height and one number of pixels on the width. Full HD is also considered 1080p. So this means you have a 1920 by 1080 resolution. A Quad HD resolution means usually that you have 1440p. So instead of the 1080p in the height, you will have 1440 pixels in the height. And when you move up to 4K resolution, the typical 4K resolution will be 3840 times 2160 on the height. 2160, as you can realize, is double 1080. So you have double the amount of pixels on the height and you have double the amount of pixels on the width. This makes the difference between a full HD stepping through the mid option, which is the quad HD, up to the 4K option, which means four times higher resolution than full HD. Here you can see them all lined up side by side. Here we have the 24 inch full HD monitor. We have the 27 inch quad HD monitor and we have the 27 inch 4K monitor. And you won't be able to see very much with this side by side comparison, but I just wanted to put them up here so that you can get a graphical overview and see that I have been testing them all out very extensively to give you as thorough info as possible. The pros of a higher resolution mainly consist of having higher sharpness and being able to see more on the same monitor. You can fit more pixels in one screen, basically. But there are also some pros to having a lower resolution, which you may not think about at first. Mainly, this comes down to the fact that when you have a low resolution, your CPU and GPU have less information to process. Your computer is going to have to generate the pixels that are going to be shown at the screen. And when there are more pixels, this will take more power of the computer. Generating a 4K image on a consistent basis is a very power-hungry task. So thinking about that and not picking a higher resolution and as high resolution as possible just for the sake of it could be very beneficial for your use case in some cases. My current main setup is this one. This is my MacBook Pro 14 with a 27-inch Innocent 4K monitor and a vertical Full HD BenQ monitor. I really like this setup because I have a lot of screen real estate with a 27 inch monitor with 4K resolution. At the same time, I have the vertical monitor to the right side of it, where if I want to read a longer document or a really long spreadsheet, I can drag that document out there and have a little bit more vertical view of it. Then, last but not least, I also have the laptop monitor, which I also use for communication tools, usually Slack or email that I want to keep open during the days. This brings me right into one of the first things to consider, which is do you want to have only one monitor or do you want to have a multiple monitor setup? When I'm working in Stockholm in my apartment there, I am using a 21 by 9 aspect ratio monitor, which is an ultra wide. This is a quad HD resolution, but the ultra wide setup means that I can use a lot more windows side by side with that nice quad HD resolution. And this has proven really good for me. So when working, I am almost starting to prefer to use my Quad HD 21 by 9 aspect ratio setup. When it comes to picking a monitor, I want to be very clear about that it's not only about picking the right resolution. And you need to consider a bunch of different factors and they are all pretty important. The first thing that you can consider together with the resolution is the size. If you're gonna have a laptop monitor at 15 inches, Maybe 1080p is totally fine. If you're going down to even 13 inches, I would pretty much be sure that Full HD is going to be enough for you. 
But when we're talking desktop monitors, when we're talking 25, 27, maybe 32 inches, you really can't be at a 1080p resolution and still get a decent viewing experience, especially if you're working with text. You're gonna see the pixels way too clear. And this is where the combo of size and resolution is so important. For me personally, I think that it's acceptable to use a 24 inch monitor with a full HD resolution. But as soon as you step it up to 27 inch, I think that Quad HD or 4K is for sure the option to go for. The next thing you might want to consider is resolution versus aspect ratio. Because the aspect ratio will also be part in setting the actual resolution, the actual number of pixels that are in your monitor. I mentioned before the 21 by 9 aspect ratio, which means that there's still in a Quad HD 1440 pixels in height, but a lot more pixels in width to be able to make up that super wide experience. There is also 16 by 10 aspect ratio or 3 by 2 aspect ratio, and these are a bit higher, so there will be a similar resolution, a similar amount of pixels, but there will be more pixels in height. Having a higher aspect ratio which shows a bit more pixels in height can be beneficial in a lot of different situations. Mainly if you want to see more rows of text on your screen simultaneously. The next thing that you might want to consider is the refresh rate. And this is quite important if it comes to a gaming application. If you are a gamer and you want your computer to push out as many frames as possible, you want to have a high refresh rate monitor that can show those frames. A regular office monitor is usually at 60 Hertz, which means 60 images per second. And even if your laptop or desktop can produce more than that in a game, you're not gonna make use of those. You're not gonna get any more images pushed out every second. You need to go up to a higher refresh rate monitor to be able to make use of those frames per second. This is also interesting when it comes to resolution, because if you go for a high resolution monitor and you want to use it at native resolution, so you want to run it at Quad HD or 4K, if you want that, you're gonna have to push out a lot of graphical information if you also want it to run at more than 60 Hertz. So a Quad HD running at 144 Hertz is probably gonna look great, but it's gonna demand a pretty powerful GPU. And this is not even talking about a 4K with a higher refresh rate. Those monitors are still pretty uncommon, but if you manage to get your hands on one, it will be very expensive, and you're gonna need to have a very expensive GPU to be able to utilize that monitor fully. The next thing that you might want to consider is scaling options. Because even if you pick a different resolution, the amount of information that you can see on the screen is very dependent on what kind of scaling you are using. So by making text smaller and by making elements in your operating system smaller, you can probably view a lot more information in the screen. However, this will not add any pixels into your screen. The only thing it will do is make more things visible because you make them smaller in the computer. Last but not least, you can also consider the brightness and the color accuracy of a monitor. Because sometimes the most important thing is not resolution, but the fact that you can use the monitor in your use setting. So if you have a window, like we have these roof windows that you can see behind me, if you have that window right next to the desk, you're gonna need to have a good brightness in your monitor so that you can see it and not be blinded by reflections when the sun is coming in through the side. And that might be more important than the resolution of the monitor when you are picking out what monitor to choose. The same thing goes for color reproduction. If you are gonna work with photos or videos, maybe the most important thing for you is actually to have a monitor that can properly reproduce colors the way that they will look in a printed setting or in a finalized product setting. So those things we're not gonna get too deep into, that will be for another video, but they are things to consider. Moving on from there, you really want to look at your own personal use cases. And I will list a few different use cases and what I think is the main thing to look at between these use cases and what I will choose based off of how I view those individual use cases. 
The first use case and the one I personally use the most is office monitors. So in an office monitor you might work with documents that are based off of text. You might also work with different softwares that are usually also based off of text. And I think for this it is pretty important to go up to a bit of a bigger size and a better resolution, a higher resolution. My personal preference here would be to go up to 27 inch or above and to go up to at least Quad HD. I have been totally fine working on Quad HD until the time when I started trying out a 4K monitor. And now when I move back to the Quad HD monitor, I think I can see the pixels way more than what I actually noticed before I moved to the 4K. So after I started using 4K, I am a convert and I really prefer using a 4K monitor for office applications. However, you don't want to forget about the ultra-wide options here. It is super nice to do office application work with an ultra-wide 21 by 9 monitor or even wider than that. The fact that you can fit two or sometimes even three or four windows side by side without having an annoying bezel that blocks the middle of the whole setup is just such a joy to use. So consider that if you have the space and if you think that you would enjoy the one monitor kind of setup. If one of your main use cases is content consumption, with this I mean uh, looking at videos and pictures a lot, then I think you should really look into a high resolution monitor, especially if you have streaming services and an internet connection that allows for a very high resolution playback. Watching content at 4K is such a joy that when you have done it, you probably don't want to go back to anything lower than that. In this case, I would also consider the fact that if you're watching a lot of video, the most common aspect ratio for video is 16 by 9. And if you go for something else, like the 21 by 9, you will have a lot of black borders on the sides when you're doing content consumption. If you go for a 16 by 10, you will have wider black borders up top. And I find this to be quite annoying. So for content consumption, I would typically go for a high resolution, as large as possible, 16 by 9 aspect ratio monitor. If you want to do photo or video editing, this is a very interesting use case. I have most of the time been on a Quad HD monitor with 25 or 27 inch resolution for editing videos. And now I am primarily using here in this office a 4K monitor for it. And I don't see a huge difference when using this. There's pretty much a similar experience for me when I edit full HD content. If I would edit 4K content, then it would make more sense as I see it to go for a 4K option. To be able to see as many pixels as possible and be able to make as precise edits as possible with this monitor. I also find the color accuracy to be very important in this setup because I want to know how the monitor and the video actually looks when I'm in the creative process and not know that when I publish this it's going to look completely different from the way that it looked when I was editing it in my monitor. As of lately though, I started editing on an ultra-wide monitor and I have to say that this is a bit of a revolution for me personally. I totally enjoy having the expanded amount of timeline where you can see so much of your whole project in the same monitor. And the fact that you can have your preview for the whole video, your preview for a single clip, together with the media bin and some effects libraries open at the same time. This has made a huge difference for me in my video editing flow and I would say if you are video editing it is really my recommendation to look into a higher resolution but also a wider aspect ratio monitor. If you are a gamer this is also one of the most interesting scenarios and one of the most interesting use cases. Because it also really depends what kind of games you are playing. If you play adventure games and the most important thing is the immersion in the game, then I think it's super nice to go with an ultra wide monitor where you can get like the experience of the game wrapping around you almost. But if you are playing first person shooter games, one of the things you really want to consider is how many FPS, how many frames per second 
can the game and your graphics card push out to the monitor and how many of those frames can you actually see in your monitor. So depending on how strong your computer is, it might actually make sense to go for a lower resolution monitor that has a higher refresh rate. I have been playing most of my FPS games on a 24 inch monitor and this is 144 hertz. And I think this is my prime recommendation for a gaming monitor. But you should also know that if you are set at one size, resizing and then recalibrating your aim in a game can be very challenging. So staying at the same size that you have been previously is probably going to be the best for your results, especially if you play your game competitively and it's some kind of shooter game. This of course mainly applies to if you have a specific gaming setup. If you have a regular setup that you also want to use for gaming, then you will probably just want to make sure that your monitor has more than a 60Hz refresh rate. I would go for 144Hz or more, because then if you get a very powerful computer with a powerful GPU, you know that it can actually push out the frames so that you can utilize your monitor's full refresh rate and resolution. Last but not least, one of the things you really want to do when it comes to this whole thing with monitor resolution is to test. Test, test, test out the different setups that you might want to invest in. Maybe you can go to a friend's place and test out their monitor. Or maybe you can go to a store with your laptop and try out the different monitor options that they have available there. I really think that this is not something I will be able to sit here and talk or even show you and then you will be able to make a final decision. You really need to try it out for yourself and see what you prefer. When you have done the testing and bought something, make sure to test it out to see that the monitor is up to the quality standards. I have a video about monitor testing and I will put a link to that down in the description below. If you have any other questions about monitor resolutions or other things in terms of choosing a monitor, please let me know down in the comment section below and I will reply as quickly as possible. I'm W2Best, I make in-depth gear reviews and tutorials and I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day, bye bye.